The Russian president's motorcade swept through a deserted Geneva and into the grounds of the 18th century villa. The spectacle of an event like this is quite something. Vladimir Putin was the first to arrive, greeted by the Swiss president, the host of a summit full of the potential for drama. President Biden followed. It was he who had initiated this meeting, a chance to put a dangerous relationship back on track, or at least try to. Will you find common ground? This was a moment for two men with such power to work the other out. If relations are back at Cold War times, then the library of old books, complete with a globe for their competing world visions, well, that was apt. And I hope that our meeting will be productive. Well, thank you. As I said outside, I think it's always better to meet face to face. But then, away from the cameras, the meetings began. The world views of the two leaders in there are profoundly different and there's no expectation that will change with this meeting. There are areas where potentially they can agree, climate change, arms control, Iran, but so many more where they will not. And so this will be about creating a more stable, predictable relationship where they can at least understand their differences and control the fallout. After three hours, less than was planned, they were done and into separate news conferences. President Putin went first and it was clear immediately that things went well. I believe that there was no hostility. On the contrary, our meeting took place in a principled manner. Our assessments on many points differ, but in my opinion, both sides demonstrated a desire to understand each other and look for ways to bring their positions closer. The conversation was very constructive. Human rights and the fate of opposition leader Alexei Navalny were brought up by President Biden. Here, Mr Putin deflected. People went into the US Congress with political demands.